Hi guys! Today I wanted to talk to you about my first day in Japan and how much of a disaster that was. So I arrived in Narita Airport and my university sent someone who ended up being my my mentor. They sent her to come pick me up from the airport, which was really, really nice. It was like my first few minutes in Japan and I'd already made a friend. So we took the train and she was taking me to my dormitory. And you know, my American brain was thinking, you know, university, dormitory, same campus. But actually, my dormitory was about an hour away from my university by train and I was not expecting that. Maybe this is my fault because I didn't research so well. So she took me to my dormitory. I remember it was raining. I had just gotten off like a 14 hour flight. I was super exhausted. She introduced me to the, the nice old couple that was like running the dormitory and they showed me to my room and that was it. I said goodbye and I was just in my little room in my dormitory by myself. I, I, I realized kind of quickly that this dormitory was not you know, only for foreigners. There was a lot of other Japanese students living there and actually the other Japanese girls didn't speak any English and I realized people running the dormitory, the old couple, uh, they didn't speak English either. So I thought this is going to be a perfect chance, like full on immersion. I wanted to learn Japanese. That's why I came to Japan. So uh, I settled into my room and I had heard that the dormitory served breakfast and dinner. So I went to the cafeteria to, to get dinner. It was kind of like a, a line. You could go with your tray and pick like miso soup and rice and then they would give you the main dish. So my first my first ever meal in Japan, I still still remember it. They gave me fish. I love fish. Even in America I like fish, but I realized eating fish in Japan was a little bit different than in the US. This was a whole fish with its head still attached. And at that time I really really did not like looking my food in the eyes. Of course I knew in Japan they use chopsticks and I had used chopsticks in America as well and I thought it was no problem. But for eating fish, you have to take out the bones of the fish with your chopsticks and then, you know, eat the meat and yeah, it, it just wasn't happening. So I was feeling really, really frustrated and I decided to maybe make a convenience store run, go to the supermarket and get some of my own food. I realized that when I exchanged my money, um, I had used a lot of it for the train ride to my dormitory and I only had 500 yen, which is like $5. So I thought, okay, I need to go to an ATM and withdraw some money. There was an ATM right by my dormitory, so I went there and I put in my card and you know, it started speaking Japanese, the machine started speaking Japanese, and then I just spat my card out. And I kind of was just like, what? So I put my card back in, thinking that maybe it would be different this time, and it did the same thing spoke Japanese and then spat my card back out and I it's kind of really really frustrating when you're so far from home so far from anyone you know and you can't even do like simple tasks like withdrawing money so I wandered around and I tried to find another ATM and I, I found one and I put my card in and did the same thing so I was feeling very discouraged and you know it's you know just just picture you know it's raining <laughs> I can't speak Japanese I don't have any money I didn't need dinner I don't know where I am so I was really thinking why why did I come here it was only my first day it was only a few hours in Japan and I was just feeling you know really 
really depressed, really lonely. And um, so I wanted to at least call home and like let my family know that I had made it to Japan okay. So this is back in 2007 and I didn't have a smartphone. Um, I didn't have my internet hooked up yet in my dormitory so I couldn't like Skype my family. And so my mom had given me this like phone card to call. So I was walking around in the dark, raining and looking for pay phones so I could call my mom. And I, I don't know what I was thinking so I don't even think payphones can call internationally, I don't know. But I was just going from payphone to payphone, trying to dial my phone card number, trying to dial my mom's number, and it didn't work. Of course it didn't work. It was really, really hard the first day. It was just a lot of things that I didn't expect. I didn't know how to eat my dinner. I didn't know how to make a phone call. I didn't know how to withdraw money. It's kind of like you're starting from scratch. But of course that was just the first day, I, I was tired, it was raining. I remember getting a message from one of my friends back home who had studied abroad the year before and she just gave me some encouragement and she said, um, you know, studying abroad is really fun but you feel like an idiot sometimes and that's exactly how I felt. The next day I went to orientation for my school and I made a bunch of friends and I ended up getting a cell phone later on and I did find out why my card didn't work at the ATMs so nobody told me this, it was kind of trial and error but apparently because my card was an American card. You can't use it at like regular Japanese ATMs. You can only withdraw money from like 7-Eleven ATMs, post office ATMs, and like Citibank ATMs. So yeah, that's something I didn't know and if I asked my Japanese friends, they didn't know because they don't use like American credit cards and debit cards. So two months I didn't have any money. <laughs> if you plan on coming to Japan, just do some research beforehand. Don't be like me. I didn't research anything. That's not very smart. Um, make sure you do your research and make sure you have money, like cash, <laughs> and you'll be okay. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you could learn a little bit more about me and follow me on Instagram, I'll link it down below and if you want to watch my other videos, you can check those out as well. So I'll see you next time. Bye!